we are going to make a game where you try to get one object, in this case that yellowy orangey ball, and you try to dodge another one, in this case the bat. And if you touch the bat, the game's over. And if you touch the ball, your score increases by one. And as you progress through the game, it will become gradually more difficult as the objects increase with their speed coming down. So you can really challenge yourself to see how good you are at this. So I'm going to go here and I am going to go to create. And we will call this game, not minus six, we'll call it dodge, not doge, the crabs. All right. I'm going to press on the little trash can, get rid of the cat, and I'm going to choose a sprite. Well, we have to have Casey looks very excited to be included in our game, so let's put Casey there. And then I am going to choose another one. Casey is trying to live a much healthier life, so Casey is going to try to get all the apples. And then Casey unfortunately has a shellfish allergy, so Casey is trying to dodge the crabs. And I am going to decrease the size of that crab because that's bigger than Casey. And yeah, that should be good. And let's make the apple slightly smaller. 90. There we go. Cool. All right, so the first thing that we want to do is we want Casey to be able to move around. And from the previous tutorial, I was talking about Scratch's movement being controlled with the X left and right and the Y up and down coordinates. So if you go to motion, you can see this change set X by whatever value you want. Change will change the value so it'll increase whatever from it uh, from whatever it currently is and set will just make it go there. In this case we want to use change. So if I do change x by 10, whoops that's the apple, we don't want to do that. We want to change Casey's x position. So if I go there, Casey will go to the right. And if I want him to move like I don't want to have to keep on doing this, that's super annoying. So I'm going to go into here and I'm going to wrap this in an if then statement. And the if then statement, where if this condition that goes inside of this little um, octahexagon y shape, um, sorry, geometry teachers, I don't know the name of that. Uh, trap is it? No, it's not trap. Sorry. Um, if this condition is true, then it's going to increase by 10. So I'm going to go here, and you can notice that all of this shape, they are, are they are, um, they're all booleans, which means that they are true or false. So if I click on it, you can see it either tells me true or false. And if that condition is true, then and only then does what happens inside of here, or does what's in here happen. So I am going to go key pressed. And if the right arrow is pressed, we want to move right. And let's do one green flag is clicked. So now when the green flag is clicked and I press the right arrow, nothing happens. And the reason is that when I press the green flag, it immediately checks as the right arrow pressed. In this case, no, it wasn't. And then it just goes, exits the program, everything's over, it's done, it's gonna take a nap. What I want to happen instead is I want it always checking. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap this in a forever loop. And now it's always checking, is the right arrow pressed? Is the right arrow pressed? Is the right arrow pressed? Oh, okay, now the right arrow's pressed. Now I am going to move X by 10. So now if I press the green flag, you can see, Casey is moving to the right. However, unfortunately for Casey, he has walked into a corner and can knock it out because we, he can only go to the right. So what I can do is using, in, on my MacBook here, this is two fingers um, on a mouse with two buttons. It'll be right click, but I get my secondary menu up there and then I duplicate it. And I can bring it down here. And now if the left arrow is pressed, I want him to go or change X by negative 10. So now I'm going to press the green flag. Casey can go back and forth however we want. And probably not strictly necessary for this game, but let's get Casey going up and down as well. So if I duplicate these two more times, we're going to have up and down. But instead of changing X, we're going to change Y. So now if I go here, I'm going to change Y by 10. If the up arrow is pressed, sorry, that's difficult to make out. But if the up arrow is pressed, then we are changing Y by positive 10. And if the down arrow is pressed, we are changing Y by negative 10. So now I press the green flag, Casey. 
can do whatever. Casey wants to go. Casey can go wherever. Casey wants to go. Casey has total free will. All right, cool. So Casey is working and functional. Now let's get these to go down. So I'm going to go to the apple. And I want the apple to start up here, but I want it to start in like a random position, but only on the x-coordinate. So if I go to go to, I think this 133 is a good position to start for the y, but I want it starting at a random position for the x. So I'm going to use this pick random block. So it's going to be negative 220 to positive 220. And the reason for that is that Scratch's x-coordinate, it goes from about negative 220 over here to positive 220 over here. So now whenever I click it, the y position will always stay the same, but the x position is going to be random. So now let's have when the green flag is, um, when the green flag is clicked, we want to go to motion and we want to change y by negative 10. So just like we do when Casey's down arrow is pressed, change y by negative 10 is going to make the apple go down. And we want this repeating until the y position, until it's below a certain amount. So until the y position is less than, bring it down here, until it is less than negative 145. Cool. So now when we do it, I think we could have that go a little higher. So let's go 150. Now if we wrap this in a forever loop, now it'll keep on doing that forever. And if we drag this over to the crab, now the crab will also have the script. And when we do it, we'll go there. And they're both falling down as Casey trying to get them. All right, however, these have no effect on Casey, so let's switch that. I'm gonna go to the apple, we'll take care of this one first. And the apple, we always wanna check. So here, every time that it's like changing Y by 10, we wanna check if it's touching Casey. If it is touching Casey, then we just wanna hide it. And every time around, we want to show. So here, goes away, goes away, it comes up. All right, so we're going to have a score up here. And in order to use the score, we are going to go to this orange tab here called variables. And a variable is just simply a, um, a unit that could hold some kind of value. So here, this is called my variable. And we have the set and the change. If we click it, it shows up. And the set will go, like if we do set, um, set to 5, it will become 5. If we do 10, it will become 10. If we change it, it will increase like that. And these could be anything. We're, we're going to use numbers solely um, in this exercise right here. But if you wanted to also just set it to some words, you could also do that. So we're going to make a new one. And we're going to call this one... Oops, make a variable called score. And in the beginning of the game, we are going to set score to zero. And then every time it touches Casey, after we hide it, we are going to change the score by one. So now when we do it, I'm going to get rid of, we have the checks over here. I'm going to get rid of my variable. And then we're going to have that go up there. Oops. Very common mistake here. I really should have, really should know how to do this, but instead of my variable, we want to switch it to score. Make sure you change that. Okay, now you can see the score goes up by one every time Casey touches it. All right, so now let's have all the negative effects of the crab having the Casey. So I'm going to go to the K. Um, I'm going to go to that, and just like in the apple, we are going to check if the crab is touching. Casey, and then if it is, we are just going to stop everything for now. So now I do, whoops, I keep on doing that, I stop it. All right, so apple increases by one, let's, oh no, I touched the crab as I was trying to get the apple, and it just stopped everything. 
But if you look in the other game, it has this sort of cool game over screen. And we want to do something similar to that. And in order to do that, we are going to use these broadcast messages. Where are they? I always go to control for the broadcast messages. But broadcast message. And let's go to the backdrops and learn how to use them. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get two distinct backdrops. One for when we're playing the game, and then I'm going to make a game over screen. So Casey is going to be... Casey is going to be Brazil. Well, Brazilian kid that likes to eat crap, um, apples and does not like crabs. So now once we're there, we are going to can do this to uh, bitmap and let's get a background of that purple. And then we are going to have some text. So anytime you use text, you want to convert it to vector because when you make the text bigger, it will be nice and crisp. And also you could edit the text later. Whereas in bitmap, you could only edit the text um, in the very first time around, and that's not very fun. So I'm going to go here, and the purple and purple contrast will not be very good. So we'll go with the purple and yellow. Casey is also a Lakers fan. So, oops, go into there. And we'll have game, whoops, that doesn't look very good. You could go here, resize it. Game, let's go like that. Play around with this later. Go back in, game over. And I am going to change your sound serif. You can do any one of these. I think I had handwriting before. Let's go curly. It's weird and cryptic. Go game over. Cool. Now we have that. And now if I go into the scripts for the backdrop, when the green flag is clicked, I want the backdrop to switch to the Rio Beach, to Copacabana there. And then if I receive, we are going to make a new message. I'll explain how these work after, but we're just gonna call this game over. And when that happens, we wanna switch the backdrop to, did I call it backdrop two? I did a poor job renaming this. Let's see. There we go. Yep, yeah, we're going to switch it to backdrop two. Cool. All right. Now, what a um, what a broadcast message is is it's just something that simply it where is it? It broadcasts a message, and then you have something that listens for it. So we have some kind of event that happens. In this case, it's going to be touching the crab, touching Casey, and when that thing happens. We have these that are listening for that message, and then we can command whatever we want to happen. So if it's touching Casey, it's going to broadcast this game over message. And then over in our backdrops, we have when it received game over, so it's listening for this. Then once that happens, it is going to switch the backdrop to the poorly named backdrop two. All right, so in order to make that, oh yeah, we already have that. So let's try this. Oh, game over. Cool. So that works. The only bad thing is that everything keeps on happening. That's not good. So let's have, let's go to these other characters and we're going to hide them. So when I receive game over, uh, we are going to hide. And then when the green flag is clicked, so just in one of these, we're going to show it because you can't um, if you hide it, when you press the green flag, it'll still be hidden. We don't want that. So let's do the same thing with the apple. When I receive game over, we are going to hide. And this one already shows up, so we don't really need to show it again. And then when we have the crab, when the green flag is, or when I receive game over, we're going to hide. When the green flag is clicked, we are going to show. All right, let's try this. All right, all right, oh no, oops. Oh yeah, so the apple, it continuously shows it. So the, even though we hide it this one time when the game is over, this loop is still going on, so it's gonna show it every time. So what we need to do is that we need to go back to, I just forget where these are, let's be in control. We don't wanna stop all, because there's still some commands after, and that sort of limits what we can do. We just want to stop the other scripts in the sprite, so that will stop this script. So now when we do it, boom, it's all over. Oh. Should probably have Casey start in the middle too, but that's fine. 
All right, now we have a pretty good part of the game. The only thing we need is for the difficulty to be increasing as we go on. So in order to do that, we are going to use variables again. Variables, again, are very powerful and something that you can make a lot of use of in Scratch and also um, in any kind of programming. So we'll call this one speed. And instead of just changing y by a negative 10, we are going to change it by the speed value. So these value blocks, they just go right into there. And just instead of whatever, um, instead of negative 10, this is going to be whatever the value for speed is. So here we are going to set speed to, let's set it to 8. And then each time it goes through this loop, it is going to change speed by 0.5. And you can mess around with these values, get it however you want. Let's go over to the crab, make sure the crab is also controlled by the speed variable. You don't want to put in the change speed by 0.5 here, because that will like double it. So if we do 0.5 and 0.5, that'll be one. It's just much easier to manage it if we only use one. So let's try this. I messed up something. What is it? Set speed to eight. That looks good. Uh, change y by speed. We want to go negative eight. So we are going no, yeah. All right, change, and then instead of change score by, whoops, change speed by 0.5, we're going to change speed by negative 0.5. There we go. All right, now we have that, and this you can see the speed increasing. And I'm still dodging that crab. Casey is nice and oh no, now the game's over. And one final thing, we still have speed there, which is not an optimal uh, user experience. And let's, so we can go here to speed. And I'm actually gonna do one more thing. We're gonna create, I didn't put this in this sample one, but this is a good, this is a cool thing that kind of like um, is pretty simple to do. We're gonna have a variable. We are gonna call this high score like that. I misspelled high, but that's all right. Uh, and we are going to go into this script. And here, once I receive game over, we are going to check if the score, oops, if the score is greater than the high score, then we are going to set the high score to the score. So it's kind of weird saying that, but if you think about it, it's fairly simple. If your score is greater than the high score, then your then the high score is then the new high score is your score. Ugh, tongue twister. All right. So did I get this right? If the score is greater than the high score, then we're going to set the high score to the score. Dun, 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 dun. All right. Let's try this. All right. I didn't get very far in my game, so that didn't work at all. All right. Cool. Let's end that. High score is three. All right, we try that. High score is still three because I didn't do good. One, get over there. All right, cool. Two, three, four. All right, let's try this again. Boom. All right, cool. So now you have a score and a high score. You could take this game in all different kinds of directions. Uh, try adding some music to it, different characters, whatever you want to do. But hopefully that was a nice little baseline for you to make some cool games here in Scratch.